Father, this just came for you. For the antidote, place it on the sundial. Huh. What a cryptic little note. I wonder... Orange pips. John, listen to me. Under no circumstances am I to be taken to the hospital. Understood? But... Do you understand? Yes. late 19th century, a near accurate reproduction. Now, you say your father asked for me by name. Yes, Mr. Holmes. He scribbled your address just before he blacked out. Unconscious, is he? I shall ring for an emergency medical team to- No hospital, Mr. Holmes. Please. I promised him. He just wanted you. Then we must leave at once. Watson. Get your metal lackey away from me. Young John Openshaw here is seeking our assistance, Dr. Watson. Indeed. Then I shall assist him down the street to the Personality Improvement Seminar. Try and understand, Watson. He has been raised as an anti-tech. His is the world of 1890. You epitomize all that he has been taught to hate. Technology. That is absolutely shameful. My father would not want that machine in our house. He can't go. Your father is conveniently lacking a vote. And if Dr. Watson stays, I stay. good father, you know. I would hope he is. He doesn't deserve this. I mean, just because we don't like machines. Lucky for you, this machine happens to like people. He's going to be fine, John. I'll make sure of it. Watson, how is Mr. Openshaw? The most confounded thing. According to my bio-organic med scan, everything in his body has nearly shut down. Except for his heart, which still has an unflagging beat. Does it? Though I admit the cause of his coma has thus far eluded me. The cause, I suspect, is in these five pips. Or rather, on them. Pips? Seeds from a common orange. <laughs> With the musk of a natural toxin added to them. Identify yourself. I demand the same of you. Uncle Elias! I'm so glad you're here. Father's sick and he had me find Sherlock Holmes. It's okay, John. I'll take care of everything now. Do you suppose he too is an anti-tech? Mr. Holmes, you are welcome here. But that hunk of hardware is not. 
Asked and answered. I'd say you need all the help offered to you, Mr. Openshaw. Especially now that those from whom you've been hiding have found you. John, you stay in the den while I have a word with Mr. Holmes. Speak your mind, man. What do you know? Only the obvious. That Openshaw is not your real name. That both you and your brother have been in hiding. That you know the identities of your pursuers. And that somewhere in Joseph's possession is a small object of great value to them. How could you possibly know all that? High walls, wrought iron spikes, a guard dog, all suggest fear and hiding. Antitects by nature tend to draw attention, which would force a change of identity in order to remain here. Your unannounced presence and safe passage past the dog implies frequent visits without worry of being seen or followed. So, I presume you must also share the same false identity. <laughs> Five orange pips, a sign feared by your brother, and by you, suggesting previous knowledge. And the object in question is small enough to fit on a sundial. It's all preposterous. Those pips mean nothing to me. Your lies will not hinder my investigation, Mr. Openshaw. Nor will I brook any other interference. Dr. Watson will remain here and monitor Joseph's condition. Oh, and stay away from the windows. The night most assuredly has eyes. <laughs> Limit analysis to natural substances. Analysis complete. Residue indicates presence of pertholiate root. Its effect on humans? Decreased brain activity. Reduced heart rate. Coma. No known antidote. Reduced heart rate. Hmm. Origin. Africa. Jungle. Discovered 1856 by Dr. David Livingston. Self, Joseph. I warned you. I'll take care of everything. Warned him of what? Machines are not worthy of my conversation. You show up unannounced, you know exactly what's going on, you lie about the pips, and now you display no sympathy towards your brother. This is certainly suspicious data for the old processor. Listen, you iron neck. At best, you are a servant. At worst, you are a jumble of warmed over diodes and fiber optics. Be glad I don't make you stay with the dogs. It's nothing personal. Anti-techs just don't like robots. A point you both made all too clear. Uplink to New Scotland Yard. Cross-check for handprint and DNA matches. Uncle, is technology really so bad? I mean, Dr. Watson is trying to help us. We shun technology, John, because it's not natural. Robots are artificial life, and they simply have no right to exist. Little by little, we are losing our humanity to these machines. But a robot didn't do this to my father. A person did, right? I'm here to pick up that shipment of perfoliate root from Africa. That's black market. What makes you think it came to my dock? Because it is black market. Too late. Already signed for and picked up. Five credits for a scan of that signature. Ten. Agreed. <laughs> The signature was bogus, but the handwriting popped up an 11-year-old hollow file. E. Hawkins, a low-level member of the tech saboteurs, apparently they... Sabotaged technology? Deduced that all by yourself, did you? I am Sherlock Holmes, after all. Tech saboteurs. Classification, radical. Founder, Dr. Joseph Dunsmere. Location, unknown. 
Hmm. Age progression. 11 years. Objective. The fight against the integration of automatons. Owners were threatened with a coma-inducing toxin. The warning sign? Five orange seeds. To further their cause, Openshaw developed lethal robotic microtics stored in a tiny cyber nest. Magnify. When airborne, these microtics will purge any robotic matrix, disabling all automatons permanently. This epidemic was averted when Openshaw abruptly dissolved the group and promptly disappeared. And I guess the cyberness disappeared with him. Now someone wants it back. It's a good thing those microtics weren't unleashed. And New Scotland Yard's entire DNA storage matrix is very similar to the robots. It would have wiped out our records. I talk about chaos. Yes, chaos. And why the sudden interest in this cyberness now, after 11 years? Scotland Yard database search complete. Handprint match. Elias Dunsmere, member of the Tech Saboteurs. A saboteur, of course! He is behind this terrible offence. It's for you, Uncle. The courier said it's from Sherlock Holmes. Hold it there, sir. Clever rules, Mr. Dunsmuir, but it is highly unlikely that Mr. Holmes sent you anything. I must inspect that. Listen, you iron neck. I don't know where it is. Where are you? Show yourself! Joseph, where did you hide it? Here, here. That won't help. Get your metal paws off me. If he hadn't lost his nerve, you wouldn't even exist. No robots would exist. And if I hadn't defended you, Joseph, I wouldn't have had to go into hiding for all these years. And I wouldn't be suffering your fate. Has Elias succumbed to the coma? Yes, moments ago. I must confess, Holmes, that I let my personal dislike for Elias form my hypothesis. I wrongly assumed he was behind this. A lesson learned, Watson. Emotions tend to cloud clear thinking. But regarding Elias' heart rate, it has weakened, has it not? Indeed. Contrary to Joseph's. But how did... You shall have your answer once we take a closer look with your med scan imager. That's... a machine! Good grief, Holmes! An artificial heart? How did you know? The coma-inducing agent is petholiate root, which normally lowers the heart rate. Unless, of course, the heart is synthetic. This model has five chambers. Strange. I can think of no operative reason for an extra chamber. And this is a fairly recent model, put into service only 11 years ago. 11 years coincides with Joseph's abrupt decision to leave the saboteurs. So he betrayed his anti-tech beliefs in exchange for a life-saving machine. How ironic. You mean a whole life it's just been a big lie? John. What's it? Get me out. Back up! Where are you? Sorry, Holmes. Grayson wouldn't approve backup. I'm all you got. Best you stand guard, then. If they overrun the house and find that cyber nest before we do, all is lost. Did he get you? Does it hurt? Since humans feel pain and machines do not, I thank you for your heartfelt concern. We must find that cyber nest, then flee to safety. John, think. Does your father have a safe in the house? A strong box? Anything? No, nothing like that. The answer is here. I know it. Joseph refused to be taken to a hospital. Why? Because of his anti-tech beliefs. But we know he'd already betrayed those beliefs by accepting an artificial heart. Was he afraid to leave his home for fear it would be searched? But it has been searched by Elias, and nothing was found. My conclusion exactly. That leaves the hospital. Joseph was afraid they'd find something, but what? Watson, project the hologram of his heart again. Of course, that fifth 
chamber on the heart. Please, narrow the hollow band. I can scarcely believe it. There it is, the cyber nest. Can you retrieve it, Watson? A simple matter with this thermal regenerator. You won't feel a thing. This will just take a moment. They found it. Move in. One global robot destroyer present and accounted for. Uh, perhaps you'd better hold it. With increased magnification, this appears to be a relatively primitive biovirus dynamo. Hmm, I wonder. Excuse me, gentlemen. Visitors are dropping in everywhere. I think it's time to hit the high road. Are they going to be okay? We're all going to be okay. As soon as we get to it, stop them young. Hmm, rather powerful. Yeah. And just what the heck are anti-techs doing with inhibitor beams anyways? Those lousy hypocrites. Another piece of the puzzle, Strahd. <laughs> They're sucking the power right out of my propulsion. I'm switching to manual. Moriarty. What? Holmes, very impressive. Please, entertain me with the deductive observations that led you to me. The sudden and intense interest in the cyber nest after all these years suggested that somebody new had entered the equation. Somebody powerful, and somebody with unique interest in what the cyber nest could do. A little robot cleansing? Ah, but we both know it does more than that as in wiping out the Yard's DNA storage matrix, which contains your recent and valued addition. I suggest a trade. This new Scotland Yard zealot in exchange for the cyber nest. Mm, forget it, Holmes. Don't negotiate. No deal. I'll sweeten the pot, then. The only antidote for Petholiate root. Come now, Holmes. We're only talking about the inconsequential loss of robotics. In previous centuries, everyone got along fine without them. You remember, don't you? Holmes, my own mortality aside, those micro ticks would wipe out every automated system in the world. People's lives would be in danger. I have your assurance that you will give sufficient warning before implementing this device. I have no desire to harm people. They will have plenty of time to prepare. Then we have an agreement. Sorry, Watson. No! You can't do that to Dr. Watson. He's more than a robot. He's my friend. Please, John. It's for the greater good. See? A win-win situation. Except for Watson, of course. Until we meet again, Sherlock Holmes. The rat's gone into its hole. How could you, Holmes? He'll now unleash those micro ticks upon the world. So much will be lost. Yeah, and not to mention my job once Grayson gets wind of this. Not to worry, either of you. Moriarty will soon discover the same thing I did. That the cyber nest's antiquated virus dynamo has long become obsolete and quite harmless. It belongs in a museum, not an arsenal. You mean? Yes, Dr. Watson. 
The future is secure for the likes of our beloved robotic citizens. And most of all, you. Oh, thank you, Holmes. I should have known there was nothing to worry about when you apologized. Your father and your uncle are recovering nicely. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Though I must say, neither were particularly pleased to find me leaning over them when they opened their eyes. All they see is a machine. Why can't they just get to know the real you, like I did? Yes. Why indeed? <laughs>